I think we can all agree that after Disney acquired Star Wars years ago, it's been nothing but banger after banger hit. It's been clear sailing for the company, not a single miss in the bunch. That was hard to get through. No, for the most part, it's been a pretty big disappointment, with even the better things like The Mandalorian eventually souring over seasons. But now we have The Acolyte, a new TV series on Disney+, Plus, which should already make people scared, that promises to be a darker, edgier film about an assassin hunting down and killing Jedi. I already talked about the first two episodes in a spoiler-free fashion, and I went all in on episode three, spoiling the crap out of it, giving a breakdown. People seem to like it. And so the market has dictated that I talk about every episode of what I call the Crapolite, starting with the first one in a spoiler fashion. Strap in, because we're gonna start now. Before I bust into a riveting and chilling tale of another sci-fi epic on Disney Plus, sarcasm still, I would love if you subscribe to the channel. Just go ahead and slice down that sub button. It'll be fine still. It'll be fine. But that way you won't miss any of these Star Wars breakdowns plus the countless hours of entertainment I attempt to provide you through movie reviews, criticisms, rants, roasts, and everything movies all the time. And occasionally we dip our toe into the TV. Set 100 years before the Empire rises to power, the Acolyte focuses on the Jedi and the Galactic Republic and how they've worked together in harmony and peace. But all that's about to change because there's some evil behind the scenes, working its magic, puppeteering, something sinister. And that leads us to our main antagonist who's gonna open this film up. We see a good looking younger woman who's dressed like a female grimace walking through the rich countryside of a planet, paying off one of the locals to tell her the location of a Jedi. And that Jedi is Carrie Ann Moss, AKA Trinity. Here she's wearing the garbs, rocking that Jedi look, but she's still got that Trinity magic. And since she's definitely gonna be the best thing about this, we're gonna go ahead and kill her off within the first five minutes. It's perfect. Thank you, Disney. I love what you've done with my heroes. This mysterious femme fatale gets into a Mortal Kombat-esque pose and challenges the Jedi Master to a battle, to a, a duel, I guess would be more appropriate. And cards on the table, this is the best scene out of the Acolyte so far in three episodes, hands down. It's a good action scene. It's a cool action fight. Some people argued with me when I talked about it and said, how dare you give any praise to this show? It's trash from front to back. And I disagree. I think you can still find good things and even things that suck. And right now we have a promising start. Don't worry. It's not gonna last long. After a couple solid minutes of hand-to-hand -hand combat with some nice forced trickery thrown in, saving people, stopping knives, old Trinity's gonna fall for one of the dumbest tricks in the book. It's a classic, the, hey, look over there move. The assassin takes a knife and throws it at one of the dumbest aliens ever. I don't know why this guy's hanging out at the cantina still. Everyone has fled but this one dude who looks like he's still working. He's still like mixing drinks and cooking shit. <laughs> and then a knife almost hits him. Trinity stops it. But she didn't know that there was another knife heading towards her. And boom, it takes her down just like that. One knife takes her down. I saw Darth Maul somehow survive getting sliced in half. He comes back half robot, but he's still very much alive. Palpatine got launched into the cold vacuum of space. He lives to fight another day. Somehow, Palpatine returned. Even bag of bones, old Leia managed to fly back from space into a ship and seal up the hull. Why is Trinity dying from a little knife stab? Anyway, she dies, and then we cut back to the assassin who goes to retrieve one of her knives. The alien that stayed there had a kid with him. Not only is this guy an idiot, he put his children's life in danger. Well done, dude. Well done. The Crapolite title enters the frame, and then we wake with Osha in her bed. She's gonna be the central protagonist here. She's a mechnic, not a mechanic, a mechnic because everything in Disney Star Wars has to be about 50% dumber than the real world. Speaking of dumb, Osha is going out into space to put out a fire that's crackling in space, fire. The fire itself didn't really bother me. That's been established in Star Wars and there could have been a tank that blew up that caused it. Well, I think there was actually something ruptured, but regardless, the crackling and the embers and stuff, that, that was just a bit too much. That was pretty silly. 
it was basically roaring up for a bunch of kids to sit around it and start roasting marshmallows. She did put out the fire, but there's a whole other set of flames being stoked right now, and that's by the Jedi Council, who is now at the ship she's working on this week, and they're looking for her. A young Jedi teen heartthrob and Dumbo start asking Osha some questions and then immediately start doing a whole bunch of exposition about Osha's life and how her parents all died in a fire. A lot of fire going on already in this show. And I'm just sitting here thinking like, yeah, she probably remembers. It's not like she's 85 years old with a bad memory. She, she's pretty young still. This stuff all happened not that long back. Why are you telling her things? She, oh, because you're telling the audience in a really lazy way. Good job. Good write. That's just good writing. But they're not just there for nostalgia's sake. She's actually public enemy number uno. Because a Jedi died, and guess what? She matches the description. They escort her into her prison cell, and they're going to take her to Coruscant. Because there's only eight planets in all of Star Wars, so naturally Coruscant's going to be in this. A Padawan sesh, short for session, is interrupted by Master Venestra. She told her buddy Soul that his old apprentice, who washed out years ago, is trash. She's trash and she's killing Jedi. He's not so convinced. Speaking of Osha, she's now in a prison cell surrounded by dipshits. Fortunately for her, poor flying is going to lead to a prison break as this ship is smashing into the sides of asteroids. Osha tries to harness the force but fails. Honey, you can't... You can't force these things. Subscribe for bad puns. A spell of good luck befalls her and she's able to get out of her cell. Unfortunately, that luck is short-lived because this ship is going right towards the planet and all the escape pods have been jettisoned, leaving her to think fast. How am I going to possibly survive a shipwreck as it's entering a foreign planet's atmosphere and is about to smash down right on the crust of it? She does the same thing any rational person would. She puts her back to a piece of junk, makes shift belts around her, and then covers her head. Listen, I cannot imagine for the life of me this working out. She's probably going to die, and that's going to be... Oh, she lived. She crash-landed on Carlac and right into our hearts. And she's not alone. There's a mysterious figure loitering around the area. She heads in pursuit. And it's revealed that the mystery woman is her sister? What? Presumed dead, her sister May is very much alive, at least in spirit. This is all a dream in her head. She's getting different visions and different communications through the power of the Force or something. Who knows? Who knows what's happening right now? It's clear that these two have a very special bond. A James Bond. That doesn't make sense. They're just connected because they're twins. They were born as two, but together they're one, or they do a bunch of nursery rhyme stuff. It's all kind of silly nonsense. But it did remind me of that awesome Spice Girl song, To Become One. Far better than anything that's happening in this Star Wars shit. The Jedi arrive on the planet and they're in pursuit of Osha. This is the lamest chase scene ever, alas, all of five seconds, where they just kind of walk through a cavern and there she is at the edge of a cliff. Kind of akin to The Fugitive. But, you know, without the stakes, the emotion, the drama, the intensity, anything that really makes a movie special. She's at the edge of the cliff like, I didn't kill that Jedi. Soul nods in agreement and says, I believe you, bitch. I might have added the, the last part. The episode winds down on a different planet with an ominous figure shadowed in the distance saying a bunch of stuff about acolytes and how they're the best things ever, how they don't kill with a weapon. And then he pulls out his weapon. Uh, the message is a little convoluted. It's a little confusing, but May's on board. She's like, yep, <laughs> I, I, I like this. I like where your head's at. <laughs> and I too was on board with this show. I didn't think this episode was horrible. Uh, on rewatch, it was definitely a chore to get through and I was kind of throwing a fit. Like, why am I doing this again? I don't need the notes that bad, but I did it for you. I did it so maybe you don't have to watch, but you wanted to know what was happening in the show, or maybe you just want peace of mind that there's other people struggling and suffering through Star Wars today, as you still are for some reason. And that's where I come in, and I would love if you came along for the ride. So please, think about hitting that subscribe button, liking this video, commenting your thoughts on the first episode, and where you're at now. Are you still optimistic that after three, things are going to get even better? That mysteries are going to be unfolding further, or maybe resolved? Let me know in the comments. If you love what I'm doing, maybe think about becoming a Patreon at patreon.com slash adamdoesmovies. I give a lot of perks away there at different tier levels. Plus, it's the best way to support the channel outside of just doing a super thanks right here on the video, and I would absolutely appreciate it.
May the force be with you. Remember when that used to mean anything at all? It just feels so empty. What the hell am I doing with my life?